Thank you. Um, yeah, let me begin with thanking for the opportunity to talk about the Allen Telescope Array and how you can access data collected with the ATA um, on GNU Radio. I will begin this presentation with giving an update what's been happening at the ATA in the last couple of years and how uh, the ATA can already be used uh, with GNU Radio um, and then later Luigi will present our newly developed module uh, which supports the data produced by uh, the new backend on GNU Radio. Um, the idea for this, for this blog uh, basically originated as a side project of my bachelor thesis. I developed an LTE detection pipeline which will be used in the future um, with um, lunar LTE downlink detection once NASA puts their, their LTE base station up there. And there and I encountered the challenge to convert the ATA's output to standard IQ samples which, which could be processed by the rest of my pipeline. So, and then Luigi came up with the idea to, to make this a new radio blog, and that's basically how we ended up here. Okay, the Head Creek Radio Observatory, which is home to the Allen Telescope Array, is situated in Northern California, about four to five hours from the Bay Area, or one to one and a half hours from Reading. Basically, in the middle of nowhere, we need to be uh, in a rural area to be protected from uh, RFI transmission which would interfere with our observations. Um, the Hagrid Radio Observatory has actually quite a rich history and has been home to multiple different radio telescopes and the most recent one, the Allen Telescope Array, uh, was constructed from 2002 to 2007 and currently is undergoing a refurbishment program that aims to uh, refurbish the, the feeds and also our digital signal processing backend. Um, we have many different use cases, science cases that we can investigate. Uh, we primarily focus on pulsars, fast radioverse, and Rossetti research. Uh, pulsars are spinning neutron stars that we can only see when their emission beam points towards the, the observer. So the result of that is a, is a pulse signal with a very uh, uniform interval between the pulses. Uh, fast radio bursts are uh, rather short broadband and bright pulses and the interesting part about them is that we don't really know where they're coming from there are multiple theories but um, as far as I'm concerned uh, none of them could be proven this far so that's very exciting research and then lastly the SETI research the ATA is owned and run by the SETI Institute so that's basically our bread and butter uh, research um, Steve talked about this yesterday already. We, we do not search for extraterrestrials uh, per se, but we, we look for traces they might leave, as in um, transmitters in the radio frequency spectrum. Um, so our uh, collaborator and, and funder, Franklin Antonio, recent, um, who, who recently passed away, unfortunately, oftentimes said that uh, SETI research is not actually a astronomical problem, but a but a problem from communication engineering. So, <laughs> I think this is a a good platform to talk about this. Yeah, the Allen Telescope Array has 42 dishes. Uh, they have a diameter of 6.1 meter and are of an offset Gregorian design. Um, they <laughs> The, the log periodic feeds that are used in the, in the antennas uh, have a log periodic structure, uh, meaning they have this, this Christmas tree st structure and um, different parts of this tree, so different leaves of this tree are sensitive to, to different uh, frequencies. So when we want to observe at a certain frequency, we can physically move the feed uh, into the, or the, the part of the feed um, into the focal point of the, of the optics to be sensitive at this uh, frequency. Yeah, they, um, once the, the data is collected by the feeds, they are sent to a central process, signal processing room using an analog RF over fiber link, which limits our bandwidth to um, or our upper frequency lim limit to 11.2 gigahertz. Um, in the signal processing room, we have four independent local oscillators, which supplies with four different tunings, each of them 
having 700 megahertz. Um, these IF signals can then be fed into one of our three signal, proce um, signal processing backends. Uh, we have the, the SNAP, SNU radio, use RPs, which I will talk about in, on the next slide, and then lastly the RF SOC boards, which are currently our main backend. So how can GNU radio be, be used at the ATA today already? First of all, there is a, a um, GNU radio module called GRATA, um, which enables an observer to use or to interface the observatory in GNU radio companion, uh, meaning we can steer the antennas, tune local oscillators, and so on, basically conduct observations. Uh, data can then be collected to the, using our two USRPs. We have a N300 20 and an N321, which supplies with 200 megahertz of bandwidth for both polarizations for two antennas. And then lastly, the GNU Radio 1 server um, that can be used to, to process this collected data. Yeah. Just let me give a brief summary of the refurbishments. Uh, currently, we have 25 operational antennas. 21 of them are uh, new refurbished design um, and cryogenically cooled. That's why these the feeds are placed under a glass dome. Um, they, the, the glass dome maintains a vacuum uh, which enables cooling. Their temperature is about 70 Kelvin. And we still have four old non-cryogenically cooled feeds. Um, we are planning to have 30 feeds operational by the end of this year. And Alexander Pollack and Sarah Schultz, who are at the observatory right now, are probably building and installing feeds right now at we, as we speak. Yeah, this is a, a slide that is mandatory when <laughs> mandatory to show when uh, people are talking about the refurbishment program. On the left hand side, we have the, our signal processing room before the refurbishment, and as you can see, it uh, was wild. And on the right hand side, we have a very neat, tidy, and operational computation room. <laughs> Yeah, um, as I said, the refurbishment also involved and in refurbishment of our DSP backend uh, and the employment of our, our, our RF SOC uh, digitizers. Um, they are used, as I said, for digitizing the signal, applying delays for beamforming, and uh, they also apply a polyphase filter bank. Um, operations that are currently supported by our backend is correlate, correlate, correlator mode um, basement capture, which basically writes uh, raw voltages to disk and then lastly beamforming. Yeah, let me begin by talking about the correlator. We have 20 antennas connected to, to this backend, which means we have 210 baselines, um, which we can cross correlate, and this forms an image of, of the sky. Um, integration lengths of 8 milliseconds to open end are supported. The backend is XGPU based. And um, yeah, we can see a picture of our correlator in action on the, on the right hand side. Um, another very useful uh, use case for the correlator mode is the um, calibration of the, the antennas, which is required for, for beam forming. Yeah, and that's basically how the calibration looks like. On the left-hand side, we have um, cross-correlations of, of multiple antennas as a function of frequency. And as you can see, those are squiggly lines. Uh, the an offset from zero means a phase a difference between the antennas, and a, a slope means a delay in time. So we have to compensate for the phase offset and the slope uh, to calibrate and, and synchronize the antennas, and then Afterwards, we can add up the samples to, to beamform. This is a, a simulation of the beam pattern of, of the beamformer for uh, the Allen Telescope Array. Yeah, the beamformer is in use since December 2021. Um, it is performed by BLADE. BLADE stands for Breakthrough Listen Accelerated DSP Engine, which uses NVIDIA GPUs and, uh, with CUDA. And it was actually developed by, by this gentleman, Luigi. Um, we can currently synchronize eight beams in real time. And the data product or the, the data that is produced by the beamformer 
is a modified Gapti format, which uh, our newly developed uh, GNU Radio module aims to convert into, into IQ samples. Okay, let me go over a couple of achievements that we have reached using the beamformer. Firstly, um, we were able to see a couple of mass orbiters during a 60 second ob observation. We saw mass odyssey, the Tianwen 1 orbiter, mass express, maven. Um, and this, of course, is a, is a very nice way to show the capabilities of the ATA because, after all, that's what we are looking for at SETI Research. But, of course, we're hoping to, to see something that humans did not build. And another observation that has actually gotten a little bit of, of media attention is um, our observation of Voyager 1, which is, of course, the, the, the furthest away human-made object from the Earth. We were able to detect that on July the 9th, 2022, during a 900-second um, observation. And again, this shows the, the capabilities of the Allen Telescope Array to detect technosignatures. If you're interested in that story, I can recommend you to check out what else uh, GitHub um, to, to give it a little bit more uh, attention. Yeah, that's it from my part. Let me hand over to Luigi to talk about how the, the Beamformer data can now be used in Radio in the future. Thanks, Sebastian. Um, so, uh, as you can um, see, um, the ATA is basically a very large SDR um, with some uh, software trickery. Um, we can possibly use all the, the output from our uh, infrastructure to, with, with um, infra software developed for SDRs like you know, radio and, and others. Um, so thinking about that, we said, um, how can we facilitate this uh, for the user? Because uh, most users don't know how uh, radio observatories like the ATA or others work. So they use some some shady uh, files to to communicate with with each other that are not compatible with the current tools. So we saw an opportunity to develop something and 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 improve the community. Um, and uh, this is some examples of data produced by the ATA. Um, this is the JPAS, the new generation uh, NOAA uh, uh, sun synchronous satellite, weather satellite. So it will uh, circum circumnavigate the, the Earth every 88, second, uh, 88 minutes and will uh, scan the surface in multiple spectral bands and transmit that data uh, back to Earth using an X-band uh, data link called HRD uh, that is 30 megahertz bandwidth because it needs the bandwidth to beam the data uh, back to Earth um, uh, fast. Um, and um, it is interesting to us this because uh, I wrote um, the emulator and decoder for the satellite. So, uh, in the future, we are aiming to decode this 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 um, th this file and produce images with the HA. Um, if you want to learn more about that, a DEF CON talk in 2018, I guess. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, another example is uh, we, this time using the Bing Farmer. We we even though we are in a valley with lots of mountains, uh, we still can see some LTE basebands uh, from nearby towns. So Sebastian, after uh, arduous amount of work, found some of these signals and, and we could uh, point all the dishes. I think this was a 20 antennas uh, observation. We pointed all to the source and we received this with the beamformer. Uh, it's a 20 megahertz LTE downlink uh, of LT band 2 uh, and 1900 megahertz uh, roughly and you can see nicely all the blocks of, of the downlink being uh, presented here. And this is the uh, ATA tracking 20 times speed of the JPS-1 uh, telescope. So you can see multiple antennas moving, uh, just the one in the center is doing other things. Uh, yeah.
Um, so now talking about more technical stuff. Um, so the file produced by the telescope is a Guppy file. Um, it is basically a raw file with some mine filled with headers. So you, um, so you, you have the, your header that is basically ask to text data and followed by the actual data, uh, metadata, the header, and then the data after the header. Uh, so to decode this, you basically read uh, the standard amount of, of header bytes from the file, and then you parse. You can, we can uh, discover here the, the number of time samples, number of frequency channels, because this is a mixed domain uh, file. So we have uh, branch analyzed data. So instead of a time stream, a single time stream with time domain data, we have uh, channels, frequency channels with some time data on it. So it's not, uh, this is not what uh, most again, radio blocks expect. They expect purely time domain data or frequency domain data. So that's an incompatibility that we found and we are aiming to solve here. Um, here's a diagram of how it works. So interleaved, um, interleaved complex samples with time and frequency also interleaved, basically a NumPy array, uh, if you're uh, used to that. Um, and they can be represented as floats or integers, uh, depending on what you are trying to uh, um, record. Um, so here uh, we wrote GR telescope, um, a new um, out of three module, uh, that can read these GOPI files. So uh, telescope, you can do an observation that is saved to disk. And after it's saved, you can easily open that with, the, with, our, with our block. And the block will internally uh, read the, this header, metal, metadata header. It will parse the data. It will get the data from the file and also uh, do uh, uh, DSP to convert the frequent mixed domain uh, data into a time stream domain that the GNU radio is expecting to. Um, so this is a sample uh, flow graph. More, you can add more plots like um, uh, Costa's loop or, or phase uh, recovery. So you can demodulate some uh, telescopes like uh, NOAA or every any PSK or any other modulations, basically SDR. So, and and currently, current implementation is CPU based and is getting 96 megahertz, 16 bits uh, floating point with uh, half real time. Uh, the most, the bottleneck here is the conversion from 16 bits to 32 bits actually, not the other DSP things. Um, but yeah. Um, so the block has, is, is very simple to use. Uh, we are abstracting away all the complexity of reading the file away from the user because uh, we can't expect you to know this file very well. So here you can choose the type, the output type, uh, and everything will be cast automatically. The file name, where the file is located. The repeat, uh, uh, like very similar from the file reader of Gino Radio. And also now the the differences, the polarizations, you can choose X polarization, Y polarization, or both polarizations, X, Y, as an output. And also the number of aspects. Number of aspects can be number of antennas or number of pings, because sometimes a GUPI file uh, has multiple antennas or multiple generated pings. So you can choose which one you want to output with this block. Um, and lastly, you can choose the channel binning. So the data, the file data is already pre-channelized. And sometimes we have a large frequency um, bandwidth. So instead of uh, just doing a computation just to filter their data afterwards, uh, we gave the, the user a, a possibility to, to lower the, uh, to to specify which channels they are interested in. Um, here, we can also synthesize uh, circular polarization from the XY polarization by uh, summing it. Uh, this is currently 
uh, not available with the ATA because we need some calibration of our backends to calibrate the, the both polarizations before this actually working. We have some uh, develop in development code that can do this with a fuel filter um, to to make things uh, um, calibrated. But we are planning to add this capability to the ATA, so both polarizations are indeed uh, calibrated with each other, and you can uh, syn uh, synthesize uh, right-hand circular polarization or left-hand. So this can be useful to decode uh, uh, other satellites. Um, so here is an uh, example of the frequency binning. Um, here we are cho choosing half of the data, so 48, channel 48 to channel 144. That is basically from 192 uh, blocks, so basically the half. And here you can see uh, visualization. So uh, in, the, in the left, we have LT channel uh, in the middle, in 96 megahertz bandwidth, and the right one we have for uh, 48 megahertz with the uh, frequent the LT channel in the middle and larger at this time. Um, and, and lastly, we have the aspect. If you have, uh, for example, this this uh, recording has uh, multiple antennas, so we can choose antenna number uh, one, and we just pass one, and we'll just give the data from aspect one, that is antenna one in this case. Um, so this is it. You can download the module now from GR Telescope. Um, we are also making available some uh, ATA recordings. Uh, if you have something interesting that you think can, could be a nice experiment, you can uh, come talk with us and we can see what we can do for it. Thank you. So I think we have time for a question or two. Are there any? Oh. So the uh, before after picture, you had the first off excellent cabling job. Love the before after picture with the before and after. Um, where you go down to your uh, back end, the data server, where you had all the, the RF socks. Uh, can you tell me how was that actually cabled up to the antennas? Do you have any more information on that? Sorry, could you maybe repeat that? I so there, there was a slide near the beginning where you had like a before and after with like the wild cabling and, and all that. Yeah. So uh, if you go to the next, like, so how are, how do you guys actually get it connected up to your uh, up to the antennas then from the from the data center? Oh, you mean on the right hand side? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This this uh, picture is deception. Um, it's it's not in this picture actually. Um, there there are basically the same the same racks um, in the background on the on the right hand side of this picture. So. Um, well spotted. They're, they should obviously be connected to something. And uh, no. So the the things that you can see on the on the left hand side here are um, are amplifiers which condition the the signal to be digitized. And um, on these in these missing spots, that's where the RF sock board enclosures go, which um, well are our digitizers. 